Hey, it's Dry Bear. Dragonflight season one is in the books. It's done. It's out the window. We're moving on to season two. And right now we're in week zero of season two before the season actually starts. And I feel like it would be a good time to look back on the final week of season one for healer rankings to see how things change throughout all of season one. So we can look forward to what's going to happen in season two. If you haven't dropped by my live stream or hit me a follow on twitch.tv forward slash dry bear. I'm live every single day. If you haven't done that yet, then the next time you pour cereal, you're going to pour it all the way to the brim and then finally realize you have no milk. We'll start off like we always do by looking at the previous data for the healers in uh, Dragonflight Season 1. What you see on screen is the first video I did for Season 1, Week 1, the very beginning of the season where the healers lined up. So we'll look at this and then we'll look at where the last week of Season 1, the final week, of 10.0.7 where things lined up for them when the season was coming to a close and uh let's just look at it here you can see at the very beginning of the season it was very obvious preservation evoker was the best healer in the game and a lot of the damage profiles that we saw benefited burst healing especially burst healing you could pocket and then release whenever you want uh, part of the reason why we saw an increase to damage dealt by 25 percent and then uh, you know, overall stamina, overall health for all players by 25% as well. That change did go live. And a lot of what they're trying to do with that is to minimize uh, more of the need for burst healing and allow healers to use their kits more frequently, right? So that they don't, you know, it's a way for shielding to be more effective um, because it scales up with the percentage of health increase. And it means that the, uh, the burst windows are a little bit more forgiving you're able to kind of play with that max HP more, especially as we get better gear and the health values go higher and higher. So Preservation Evoker, uh, this was basically the case throughout all of Season 1. Preservation just dominated the charts in all categories. Uh, they did get a 5% nerf across the board, still dominated the categories. Restoration Druid was about the same, very much at the top there, dominating everything, doing exceptionally well. And then we saw uh, kind of a, this battle between the rest of the specs all throughout the season, um, except for one spec, Discipline. Discipline uh, never really recovered in Raid, although they did bounce back quite well in Mythic Plus. They were actually decent towards the end of Season 1 with some big changes that we saw there. So these are the numbers of the beginning of the season. Let's take a look at the end. And boom, this is the last residor, uh, res registered week of Season 1 Dragonflight. This is where everyone lined up eventually, and it's kind of interesting to see it seemed like there was just less play at the end, like the last week or two, uh, people stopped playing their mains, and we saw a lot of uh, parse numbers go down. So kind of interesting to see where everything is, but this is where we ended up. Uh, we'll talk about uh, each individual change here, but there's some things that are very important to note. The first one is uh, going to be Preservation of Ochre. You can see that they did not end the season on the top for Raid. Um, they actually got beat out by Holy Priest. I think all the Priest buffs, Holy Priest got changes in December, in January, in February, in 10.0.7, uh, in the, the balance in between, like they just got so many buffs that I guess it just eventually clicked. Um, they've always been crazy throughput. So looking at just pure throughput values, uh, you're going to see Holy Priest climb to the top, especially in Raid. And they actually took that spot at the end of the season. And in general, I think people have Holy Priest as a comfort pick. So you'll probably see more people playing Holy Priest when it comes to Raid. Uh, especially specifically in heroic as well, just kind of popping on and get those numbers. So super nice there. Um, we did see that restoration druid held on to their spot in general. I mean, they're still second overall. They're still insanely good in uh, mythic plus and mythic raid as well, um, throughput wise. But they obviously have more uh, options for providing utility for the group. A big upset was restoration shaman, specifically in mythic plus, but just in general. I think the 10.0.7 changes, the chain heal changes, especially the one where they could have very easily accessible double length bounces on the chain heal meant that on spread fights, they could still chain heal reliably, gives them awesome options for dealing that extra healing. And I also think that the, the whole idea that uh, Spirit Link Totem was enough for them to do poor healing numbers, that whole idea, uh, hopefully we can put that to bed because they are still, they're, they're a utility healer. They have a lot of utility, more so than, say, a Mistweaver or a Holy Priest uh, has an option, but there's still a throughput healer when you compare it to, like, a Holy Paladin or a Mistweaver that's specced for single target. Uh, I think they still need to have those good numbers, and they've got them. 
The changes that they got ended up being a really big boon for them. They brought up all their healing numbers. And again, I think the chain heal change was the biggest one because it meant that you could go chain heal as an option, as a build, and you can still use it even when the fights are spread. And there are plenty of fights in Vault of the Incarnates where people were spread out, uh, either intentionally or because of mechanics. Um, but there's plenty of them. I would say over half or maybe about half of them you had to have people spread out significantly, which means that if you're running Chain Heal without the changes, uh, then you, you probably wouldn't be able to get any value out of that at all. Looking down at uh, Restoration uh, Druid, Restoration Shaman, Preservation, Holy Priest, Mistweaver is another one to talk about. Um, they kind of, they I would say they fixed, Mist, Mistweaver started the season very low, about Discipline Priest low in general, but they were performing very low in all categories. Then they made lots of changes. They made the talent changes. They brought in Shylan's Gift from Legion, but they made it more of an option there. They brought the Mists brought in, um, kind of like the Insect Glaive uh, buffs from <laughs> Monster Hunter, being able to pull in the pools and use them. And they got some really nice changes to their tree. And they even got down on the bottom right, being able to get a five-man Shylan's Gift, which means it's, it's even better for Mythic Plus. All of that mostly helped them in Raid, allowed them to get some crazy throughput values, I still think they are just, unless they spec for tank healing or spot healing, which are two different specs, they're just a throughput healer, right? They don't have uh, grade-wide damage reduction. I would say revival is mostly for cleansing, unless you super buff it and get a big bonus. But honestly, if you compare revival with, uh, uh, what, what's the, rewind from preservation? Rewind is what revival wishes it was. So I think like just utility-wise, Mistweaver doesn't bring all that much to raid. They are just pure throughput, the HPS values. So I think that it's really good that they brought those up, and I would honestly probably want to see them a little bit higher in Heroic Raid, uh, but in general, I think they are throughput. They should be up there with Holy Priest. That's where they best sit. Unfortunately, the story is not the same for Mythic Plus. I think from the very beginning, Mistweaver was uh, rivaling Discipline for the worst healer in Mythic Plus, and they ended the season as the worst healer for Mythic Plus. And actually, if you look at the top M Plus clears, uh, Mistweaver stopped being able to clear uh, M plus at around plus 25, plus 26, whereas every other spec was clearing to plus 28. Um, so they just obviously they, they just can't keep up. But there's more changes in season two, and hopefully uh, with the, the new set bonus giving mana and even more options for your brews and teas, I think it's going to be pretty interesting to see where Mistweaver goes in season two. And next, let's talk about Discipline Priest. Discipline, I I'm shocked that there weren't more changes to atonement in season one. Maybe they just wanted to see the season play out. Maybe they didn't think that discipline needed it. Uh, they made a nice change in Mythic Plus, but what they did was they changed uh, Powered Radiance and Flash Heal. So they give them a lot of upfront burst healing, which primarily affects Mythic Plus. Being able to do that is super nice. And there's some cool changes uh, for them in 10.1. Their set bonus is kind of boring, but it can be useful. You get more value out of Penance. Uh, which again probably helps Mythic Plus, and they're pretty decent in Mythic Plus. You can see they're even parsing uh, in that upper echelon with Restoration Druid, Resto Shaman, Preservation. Uh, in the MDI, we saw plenty of Dis Discipline Priest play, so Discipline doing great in, uh, in Mythic Plus. Still doing pretty abysmal in Raid. Uh, they do okay in Mythic Raid, but they do very poorly in Heroic Raid. They still require probably the most training and prep of all the healers in the game. Uh, so it's easier to screw up and harder to succeed with it. Uh, and I think that it, until you make more buffs to Atonement, you're not really going to be able to bring Discipline up. And in fact, you can even see it by the actual values on the far left there. How everything stacked goes from 86 to 90, a, a nice chunk there in Heroic Raid for all the healers. All the healers are pretty close in Mythic Raid from Mistweaver down to Discipline. Um, but then you can see that there's a very big drop off for Discipline when it comes to raid healing, especially on the, on the lower difficulty, uh, just not as much throughput there. Um, Holy Paladin is the next one to talk about. They started the season insanely strong, and they're still one of the best healers. I think that they have easily the best utility kit for all healers in the game, and so you probably would expect them to be lower, but also probably one of the only remaining healers that fits well into the spot healing role or the tank healing role, and so that's obviously going to, if you're healing one person a lot versus healing 20 people a moderate or small amount, the bigger raid healing is always going to have more throughput, higher HPS, and the bars are going to be longer and bigger, and everyone's going to pat you on the back as you leave the raid. So Holy Paladin 
it, it, they, their HPS is relevant to how well their other healers are doing. If their raid healers are under healing, Holy Paladin can have crazy HPS. If they're not, then they kind of fall behind on that. But they do their job, and it's one of the most important jobs in raid, uh, being able to spot heal so individuals don't die when they screw up, and to heal tanks because the tanks can't go down either. So either way, they have some good options there. There's some interesting changes, um, and I, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe these the set bonus with the um, the hammer on the ground is going to be worthwhile. I don't know if anyone's really going to want to use uh, the the prism. I, I Their set bonus is so hilarious to me because I feel like it's just, it's so bizarre. Uh, but it, maybe they get some good AoE healing out of the hammer reset, uh, the extra scaling on the healing from that as well. And maybe stacked healing for Holy Paladin gets way better. Um, they already had pretty good stacked healing with their Light of Dawn, but maybe, you know, we'll see. We'll see going to season two, well, how that works out for them. It started season one in Mythic Plus very high. And they slowly slipped for over, over time, started getting replaced by uh, Disciplined Priest climbing up. We even saw uh, Holy Priest in some points do really well. When Resto Shaman got the 10.0.7 changes, insanely good, brought them way up. Preservation and uh, Restoration Druid always did well in Mythic Plus, but Holy Paladin was actually in the top three for the most of the first month, and then they've been falling ever since. As far as that, we still see Holy Paladins doing the best keys in the world. Um, you know, the, we, you're still going to see better performances from Resto Shaman, Resto Druid, Preservation of Ochre, but Holy Paladin can still do it. It's just on average, uh, they're doing less than their counterparts. So that's where we ended up with healers at the end of season one. I'm excited for season two. Let me know what your predictions are for season two Dragonflight for these changes for healers. And that's all I got. If you enjoyed yourself today, leave a like down below. You can support me and my work on Patreon and view Patreon exclusive content. Link in the description. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.